Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday in the octave of Christmas, <laughs> as Rachel said. Yes, it, it, it's after Christmas and we're still here and we've survived. It's a beautiful day here today. Another beautiful blue sky day. Very cold. And there we are. As we always do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Or forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. The same Christ our Lord. Amen. Great. Good times. Yes, we are still here. <laughs> All right. With that said, <laughs> let's dig in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and invisible God, who dispersed the darkness of this world by the coming of your light, look, we pray, with serene countenance upon us, that we may claim with fitting praise the greatness of the nativity of your only begotten Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with grace and power, was working great wonders and signs among the people. Certain members of the so-called Synagogue of Freedmen, Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and people from Cilicia and Asia came forward and debated with Stephen, but they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. When they heard this, they were infuriated and they ground their teeth at him. But he, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked up intently to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead and guide me. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. I will rejoice and be glad because of your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of men, 
for they will hand you over to courts and scourge you in their synagogues, and you will be led before governors and kings for my sake as a witness before them and the pagans. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. You will be given at that moment what you are to say. For it will not be you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will hand over brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but whoever endures to the end will be saved. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Happy St. Stephen Day. So, there is, of course, the great Christmas carol, Good King Wenceslas. <clears throat> the reason why it's a Christmas carol is because the things in the song happen today. Good King Wenceslas went out on the feast of Stephen. That's today. And all the other things that happened in that. It's a lovely story. Good King Saint Wenceslas is all kinds of fun, but that's a whole different time of year. So, anyway, it's just one of those... <clears throat> it's one of those moments where it's it's, it's about St. Stephen Day only because it just happens to be. It could just as easily be any other day, but that's how the song comes to us. Incidentally, the tune is actually a, it's actually a summer tune. I mean, originally the words are, now is the time for flowers. That's the, what the song originally, a long time ago, like in the 13th century, is from. But obviously, no, not right now. It's all ice and snow. And so the Christmas carol arises where St. Wenceslas tells his page to step where I do, and then you will have warmth while we go bring the uh, the food to this peasant who's walking in this, this snowstorm, blah, blah, blah. There you go. That, that's the whole St. Stephen thing with St. Wenceslas. But... <laughs> Today being St. Stephen Day is the first of a couple days of martyrs that we celebrate during the Christmas octave. So the point of this is very, very simply that in the incarnation of Christ, the Son of God, one of the very important, in fact, necessary, in fact, kind of big, like the big thing about it is that he must die. <laughs> so not to be all terribly morose or morbid or macabre, but actually that's kind of an important part of the whole birth of Jesus thing. So with St. Stephen, who is the proto-martyr, the first of martyrs, asterisk, we, and right at the very beginning of the Christmas octave, happy second day of Christmas here, go right into the story of martyrdom and all that. Of course, obviously, asterisk proto-martyr, because St. John the Baptist died before. But St. Stephen is the first one after Easter. We heard that story in the Acts of the Apostles, after all, and Saul is standing by. You know, nice little foreshadowing happening for other things happening later. The proto-martyr of the time of the church, of the resurrection and the salvation having been won. Okay, but again, coming to this idea, though, that Christ must suffer and die. Why? Well, we talk about those things kind of at a different time of year at the other celebration at Easter. But it's also important to remember that like the incarnation of Christ, the Lord, does not happen in a particularly nice way. Other than, yes, angels but then shepherds and, you know, mangers and, and, and flight into Egypt and all of these other things. It happens in a very troubled way, and it is not at all as glorious on the outside as we say it is on the inside, as it were. And so we have these days of martyrs that we celebrate today, tomorrow, Thursday, Thursday, when of course we have no coffee, is the Feast of the Holy Innocents, which in other parts of the world is also the kind of the April Fool's Day because it's the Holy Innocents, get it? You know. Anyway, the, the point of it though 
is again the same thing that one of the consequences of the birth of Christ, in fact, are these martyrs, or at least these deaths in a very kind of much more basic kind of way, very, very simply. It's a consequence of the coming of Christ, which is also part of the whole Magi story and all of those things. But the reason why, again, is that we can't be simply overwhelmed by the cuteness of the incarnation, but rather also the depth and the meaning of it that goes toward this other thing. Even St. John tomorrow, whom we'll celebrate, is part of this. Uh, now, he's not a martyr, although again, asterisk, except he was. So he did actually suffer for the gospel and was exiled famously and and Patmos did all of the things he did there with the book of Revelation and so on. But he also did suffer, and there's a pot of boiling oil that we'll talk more about tomorrow. So again, coming to this very strange thing that yes, in the Nativity of the Lord, there is actually a great consequence of suffering. There are two things to take from that, which are rather important, especially from the Holy Innocence on Thursday, is that Right from the very beginning, there is this claim that actually being part of this Christian world, being part of this Christian idea, does not mean that you will be safe from harm, but rather that there will be sufferings. That just because one may be innocent does not mean that one will be free from having to suffer greatly. Uh, this is a very good lesson. Sometimes we find ourselves, first of all, in situations where we cannot get out of suffering, or even more simply, find ourselves in situations where there is no not sinful option for a choice, for example. That That's a, that's a thing. And um, it may seem kind of out of place to say it the day after Christmas, but it's actually, unfortunately, part of one of these things. Why? Well, because the world in which we live is this way. The incarnation of Christ the Lord does not change the world so that evil no longer exists. It changes the world, but for another reason, and in another way, that the evil that does exist may be turned into what is good, that by our lives and deaths, we may actually have more than simply death, but actually eternal life. The reason why Christ our Lord is born is not just that he may suffer, but that he may open for us the gates of paradise. This is the whole big point, that the suffering in the world will be there, but it is not simply just a waste. Rather, that it, we are saved. This is the Christian message written large. And this is what we have today with St. Stephen beginning this very important proclamation that the birth of Christ does not signal the paradise already, but rather it changes the perspective that our lives are very much worthwhile, that Christ has given us a great deal of meaning and not just meaning, but also by being a human being in the normal way means that we other human beings who are also very much in the normal way, have uh, an adoption which is greater, an inheritance which is that of the sons and daughters of God. And so we celebrate these various martyr days, even now during the Christmas octave. All right, that's all I wanted to say. As we celebrate this time of Christmas, we also celebrate what is the beginning of that story, which is of our eternal life, which is, of course, the whole reason why we must celebrate Christmas, because Christ has given us this life eternal. All right, as we always do, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For the Holy Father's prayer intention this month, that the Holy Spirit helps us to recognize the gift of different charisms within the Christian community and to discover the richness of different ritual traditions 
in the heart of the Catholic Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we grow in thanksgiving for God's abundant gifts, and especially the great gift that is the birth of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may strive for peace on earth and encourage those in their care to live with the goodwill toward all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increased spirit of giving during this season, that we may remember those who are less fortunate and strive to lighten their burdens. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for whom and what else shall we pray? Through the intercession of St. Monica, and for all our families and friends, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Lord, we pray, that we may imitate what we worship, and so learn to love even our enemies. For we celebrate the heavenly birthday of a man who knew how to pray even for his persecutors. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. That collect for St. Stephen is also another one of those things, another way to understand not just the death of Stephen, but also the incarnation. That whole thing at the beginning of the Gospel of John, where he came into the world and the world did not know him, the world is adversarial to Christ. Certainly that's the story from his birth. And that's also very much something that we should keep in mind, even as we pray for those who don't like us very much sometimes. Let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church. To the same Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. All right, everyone have a lovely Tuesday, second day of Christmas. And we'll see you again tomorrow. All right, God bless you all. Bye-bye.